What's up in the sky? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? It's satellites. Join the club. There are certain things that uh, we're just told and we're just like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> and then we just move on with our lives. Yeah. <laughs> um, like gravity. And we're just like, one day our teachers told us that we're on this floating rock in a, in, in a vast nothingness and um, we don't have to worry because... Um, there's this thing called gravity holding us down. And we're just like, okay, cool. <laughs> um, and then they're like, but also Earth is careening through space at like 107,000 kilometers an hour. But it's cool because gravity holds the atmosphere down. So we'd never know that. And then we're just like, nice. That makes sense. <laughs> and we're, and we just move on. And then... All of a sudden, we're like, well, what keeps Earth in place? And they're like, well, it's the sun's gravity. And we're like, cool, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then we're like, well, won't we eventually crash into the sun? And they're like, sure, but like, it's in a really long time. And we're like, oh, thank goodness. That sounds good. <laughs> like, I was <laughs> never, I, that was never me. I was like, that sounds fucking terrifying. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. I never questioned it. I, I was like, that it. sounds suspicious. Like, I was highly not concerned about that whatsoever. I was very concerned. I didn't even know any of these I'm facts. not concerned. <laughs> no. Why would I be concerned? My baseline is doom, so <laughs> that was alarming. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I feel like I, I feel like satellites is just one of those things where like we're just told um, so there's a bunch of satellites floating around in space and they help us move information and stuff. And we're just like, oh, that's great. That's, that sounds like a helpful thing. That's nice. <laughs> but then you hear like, okay, the moon's also a satellite. And you're like, oh, what does that mean? Like, well, it's just orbiting the Earth, right? Yeah, but what does it do? Deflects stuff. The moon itself <laughs> is one of those things also where you're just like, <laughs> the, yeah, look up in the sky. There's this big fucking rock that just stays out there. I absolutely blindly follow many things, unless it sounds ex like really dumb. And that's usually much less, like on a much smaller scale than that stuff. Yeah. So today I want to look at what the hell a satellite is and how the hell does a satellite work? Because I've honestly never even thought to ask that question. So, what is a satellite? A satellite is either an artificial body placed in orbit around the Earth, or moon, or another planet in order to collect information for communication, or a celestial body orbiting the Earth or another planet, like the moon. Um, so satellites, these man-made satellites are just shot up into space using a rocket, which gets it close to its orbital zone. Um, and then the rocket is released and typically the satellite will have a self-propulsion system to kind of place itself into orbit. And like then find its sweet spot. And then it just stops. And it's <laughs> like we move around the satellites? No. Well, no. <laughs> like they, like well, actually, they're orbiting think, us, right? I think there are actually freaking satellites that just sit in one place. They're just stationary. Yeah. There's but they're not. They're, they're just the rotating at <laughs> like the same speed as the Earth in, in the same. So there are, okay. I think I, I think I come to this. <laughs> I think it's been a while. Um, 
Most satellites hang out at an altitude of 160 to 200 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. And these are referred to as low Earth orbit satellites or LEOs. LEOs are mainly used for communications like cell phone networks, navigation for GPS, um, research um, of the Earth's atmosphere and surface and military purposes. Uh, there are also higher altitude satellites. These are placed around 36,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface and these satellites are either geostationary or geosynchronous. So Some yeah. of those ones would be, yeah. So geo, geostationary means that the satellite stays above the same spot um, and rotates with the Earth so it appears to be in the same spot uh, in the sky no matter what time of day. Uh, and this makes them good for internet services, weather predictions, and surveillance. The geosynchronous satellites um, make one rotation around the Earth per day, so it moves across the sky uh, at the same speed of the stars. So it's like kind of set up. So if you look up, if you were able to see the satellite, it looks like a star up in the sky. Um, and these satellites are used for television and radio broadcasting because it like shoots across to different places, which is, I don't know, it's, it doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> Sorry, it just doesn't make any sense to me how they, they you can just shoot something up there and these things aren't just flying around like they're not using propulsion. How do they get some to stay and some to go? <laughs> that makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Just well, someone it. with a better understanding of <laughs> everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> like, fuck. These people, are, these people are smart. We're not. Uh, I'm not smart. <laughs> so Which, kind for not assuming. <laughs> of us. <laughs> Which leads to, how do satellites work? Satellites are needed because wavelengths... Satellites are needed because wavelengths travel in a straight line. Um, so if you're trying to send something over a long distance, the curvature of the Earth would mean that you would basically need an extremely tall towers to actually make a connection point. So it was bop, bop. Um... With satellites, um, they can beam straight up into space and then straight down to a different point on Earth. Um, Man-made satellites have transponders built into them where they collect the data that is sent up to them from ground-based transmitters and then they amplify them back down to Earth. It's actually very simple, apparently. Uh, natural satellites like the moon basically just affect like tides and shit. That's really all it does, but it's a, still a satellite. Um, using magnets. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Pardon me. If you can find the answer to how the moon moves water, I'd love to hear it because I don't. Uh, I don't know. You remind me of Doctor Evil there. <laughs> Magma. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Do you want an answer? Sure, yeah. <laughs> it was easy. It was that easy. <laughs> well, I googled how does the moon move water, and the first thing that popped up is on the near side of the Earth, the side facing the moon, the gravitational force of the moon pulls the ocean's water towards it, creating one bulge. One bulge. <laughs> That's what it says. On the oceanservice.noaa.gov site. Is that really it? So, like... Is it all water, or... On the far the side water? of the Earth, iner inertia dominates... Inertia. inertia? Dominates, creating a second bulge. In this combination of gravity and inertia, create two bulges of water. What is? So many bulges. The moon and Earth. The moon and Earth exert a gravitational pull on each other. Interesting. Okay, well, wait. Why is it just water? Like, are people lighter when the moon is above their head? 
Is that why I am so bloated? <laughs> right? Like, why is Where's it just the- water if that's the case? <laughs> yeah. Well- is that why everybody's been so fucking mean this week? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why full moon. Oh, that had nothing to do. It's like the sun cycle of the moon. <laughs> But like, Some moons do do a thing. They make people weird, man. Yeah. Why are we? I've worked in the healthcare like, system. A little for lighter. Years to know. <laughs> I don't know. The like if there, does shit. it does. Here's we should do an experiment. We got like a really high level scale. We weigh an object when the moon's above and when the moon isn't. Yeah, but and it, it would probably be so minuscule. Maybe it wouldn't even pick it up. Yeah, but it's moving so much water. <clears throat> Anyways, <laughs> that, honestly, that just sounds like a whole other episode. <laughs> um, okay, how, how many satellites are up there? So, there were about 8,300 individual satellites that are orbiting Earth as of November 2022. How what many? does that number sound like? Is small? It, yeah, it sounds small. Yeah, I know. What's the number? How much? 80. 300. I feel like they're, yeah. It doesn't sound like that no. many. Like, they've no. been shooting. How long, when did they shoot the first satellite up? When did they shoot the first satellite up? Um, so, it, anyways, that number is an increase of 11.84% compared to April 2021. And in Amazing. November 2022, oh. around 4,900 of these were actually active satellites. What? So is that like a, they're retired? Mm-hmm. So what's the plan to get rid of them? Well, they just hang out. <laughs> Until like there's no room where they're like, oh, this one's in the way. Yeah, but I mean... Like they're going to obviously have to go up there and get them. Like, no, I think, think you're thinking of this in... Uh, mm-hmm. I think you're thinking 2D. Like there's not just one solid plane. Yeah, I know. Like, uh, I think there's tons of room to put more. But we'll get to that, okay, actually. Because I'm like, the space shell's got to go through, and they got to know where they all are. What did I have you ask? When first did they satellite. shoot the first satellite satellite into space? Yeah. On October 4th, 1957, the Soviet Union launched the Earth's first artificial satellite, Sputnik, into... Oh. One. Hmm. Shit. You don't know. <laughs> That's common knowledge. Sputnik? I yeah. supposed to know that? Well, I've heard of Sputnik before, for sure. Sounds like a restaurant. <laughs> really? Sounds, Sounds like, like a potato. Right? Yeah, Ross Geller. Dressed up for Sput- as Sputnik mm-hmm. for Halloween. Oh, Sputnik. Yeah, remember he's a potato. <laughs> <laughs> um. The amount of satellites in orbit is increasing at a crazy rate, with Old Muskie and Starlink having launched around 2,000 satellites just last year. Uh, they're hoping to have over 12,000 satellites in orbit by the end of 2023. From 8,300. And their idea is that they're doing... Oh no, that's just Starlink. They're doing wireless internet everywhere, right? Starlink? Yeah. Yeah. Fucking. So SpaceX is producing six satellites per day and hoping to launch a new batch of satellites every single week, carrying 50 to 60 satellites per rocket. And where, what are they doing with them? They're, what do you mean? They're setting them out there. They're, That's... they're creating a satellite constellation. The satellite constellation will consist of 48,000... Satellites when it's finished making a crazy grid pattern over the entire planet and supposedly bringing internet to the entire world Just all the time anywhere. That's right. Just always connect to Wi-Fi. Yeah You're in you're hanging out at Pride Rock and yeah, will scroll your reels <laughs> Just <laughs> another still, subscription service. Still hanging out on TikTok <laughs> Yeah, seems super necessary yeah, right. Like, Good way to unplug. Well, you know what though? Like, it, obviously, there's, there's, there are advantages to so like uh, having these people have access to the same knowledge that the rest of us have. And like, it would be good for people who are doing like research in remote areas and stuff. True. Like, that would be. It's a good point too. A lot of rural areas. Mm-hmm. 
Do you know Nikola Tesla had an idea to electrify the Earth with DC voltage? You would put antennas at your house, and it would pull electricity out of the air. Really? What? Yeah. So, like the Tesla coil, you know, or like the yeah, he wanted to do that with Earth, and then it was like. But isn't that like wildly dangerous? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> Obviously. We like wireless electricity. Huh. Nice. <laughs> so you just live in the current. Yeah. <laughs> it just goes through you. You're just ready to go at all times. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, like we may need a few episodes to figure out what the hell Starlink and Elon are up to because I was just scratching the surface with that data and the. Honestly, like, I'll put it up on the screen, the Starlink, like, the this satellite constellation looks fucking crazy. Like, it's wild. Is it all lit up? Or are they going to, like, no. like a regular satellite? Or they probably don't want lights on it, because that would be, like, I don't think insane. I don't think many satellites have lights on it. It's like, true, because if there's that many, we'd see more on the few that we already... Yeah. yeah. But you know what? Like, I was hanging out in the hot tub... And I was looking up, and I see, like you can see them. You can see them just because it's just one single line, and they just go whoosh, 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 through the sky. Yeah. And so, like, yeah, they're not going to be invisible, which will be interesting when there's why? forty. Are they reflecting thousand. light? And that's why you see yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, where I was seeing them was like right near the moon. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> pretty neat. Makes sense. Pretty neat, but Sally's about to have a pretty cool. bright light. <laughs> you know, like, pretty, pretty far away. Yeah, I was like, man, these satellites. <laughs> Some big lights on there. <laughs> <laughs> um, do, 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 do. Um, so, I was wondering how the hell these things don't run into each other constantly. But, like, now that I know that they're putting 43,000 freaking satellites out there. Uh, like, I really want to know how the hell they're doing this. So, why don't they crash? It, the answer is, honestly, just that smart smart people are in charge. <laughs> 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 they, did, they, they did the math. <laughs> I feel like if all like the new cars have all this technology, then they can sure figure it out for satellite. Also, yeah. who has authority over space? Nobody. Like, what if what if one country was like, I don't want to see 40,000 satellites all the time, and I don't want internet. Doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want. Space. So, so they, they can just, just blow them all out of the laws. sky? Yeah, you can blow them all out of the sky, but then, like, you're... Space murder. That's... Space murder. Like, <laughs> you'd piss somebody off. There'd be repercussions. Exactly. You're just, like, basically starting a... Well, maybe not a war, but space war. Definitely space a um, <laughs> definitely a um, conflict. Mm -hmm. So be smart, people. <laughs> um, Fellow scientists. <laughs> the, these smart people are placing these satellites in orbit at that. It, uh, the, the trajectory trajectory of these satellites never really changes at all. So the only satellite that might get into the next one's way is a brand new satellite. Um, so basically, there, there is no one body that determines where satellites can sit out there. Um, but mostly everybody that's shooting rockets into space lets the world know that they're doing it. Because, like, <laughs> if you shoot a rocket up into space and, like, say say North Korea shot a rocket up into space, and the states are going to be like, the fuck are they doing? <laughs> right? So, like, they're, they're going to they're gonna share that information. And it's very courteous of them. Hmm? Very courteous, mm. just you know, like a common, <clears throat> yeah. Well, it's among mm, space, it's, it's one part courtesy, one part self preservation, I think. But, um, so the scientists that put these machines together are also inclined to protect their multi million dollar investment. Um, so they put thrusters on each one of these things in case of a threat, 
uh, the machine has sensors that will tell them if something is coming, and they'll do they'll list lazily to the left just to avoid it, right? Because mm-hmm. they it, this way, like nobody has to really monitor the satellite that's out there. It kind of monitors itself in case anything's coming. And then does it set it back on its same course? Then, like it would be like a. I'm not sure. I don't know if he would because if, if it if it well yeah like well then you could run into a problem where now it's in the way of another one and then that one moves and then it's just like a domino effect of satellites now just controlling their own space and going like I don't know just move here and all of a sudden it's just general chaos. True. Yeah. But could they put little guns on? Why? Because it's cool. <laughs> space war. Space war. Space war. <laughs> um. The other thing that needs to be considered when you're thinking about this stuff is how massive space is. Um, these things are just floating in like nothingness. There's only there's only 8,300 satellites in orbit in a very large open space, which is not two dimensional, right? The space the space is so massive that even when Elon has his 48,000 satellites cruising around up there, each satellite will have about 100 kilometers of horizontal and vertical separation from the next satellite. So like the chances of these things running into each other are like zero, which is wild to me. Uh, uh, It just doesn't... Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah. So perfect. For perspective's sake, um, we would fit. We would be able to fit eighty four eighty four percent of the world's population, or six point seven billion people, on the island of PEI, if we went side by side. That's six point seven billion people. And that's how much space that me that many people take up if they're shoulder to shoulder. So you put 48,000 freaking satellites up there, they're nowhere near each other. Hmm. On PEI. PEI. That little tiny... Yeah, it takes you an hour life. 40 to drive across. Yeah. And you can fit 6.7 billion people in there, if you don't expect them to breathe. Yeah. Or just breathe <laughs> each other. It'd be hot. Pardon? They'd be very... Yeah, breathe each other. Yeah, definitely. You definitely couldn't. Be good. I wouldn't like to. <laughs> It'd be gross for sure. <laughs> Too much touching. Um, oh, sorry. It, it takes three hours to drive from tip to tip on PA. Three hours. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what Starlink is. This is the, the, the thing we were talking about. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but I haven't Internet heard of it before this. Oh. oh. <clears throat> Brand new information. Mm-hmm. It's weird to me that there's no like, is there, do we have like a space agreement? <laughs> With, I feel like it's like this unspoken right? like, yeah. like common courtesy thing. I'm sure there's But a, people are assholes. Like, I'm sure there's an agreement. There has to be some, is there a space agreement? Yeah, look it up. What does it say? The Outer Space Treaty was opened for signature in the United States, the United Kingdom, and the Soviet Union on January 27, 1967. Oh, that's pretty early. Yeah. That's like pre-Cold War, Mm -hmm. for sure. As of February 2020, 112 countries are parties to the treaty, while another 23 have signed the treaty but have not completed ratification. Hmm. Yeah, Yeah, Cold War began after World War II. It like just bled into it. Really? Well, it was just the conflict between them where they were both like, oh, yeah, we I don't guess. like each other and we're fighting over this stuff. And they were occupying parts of Europe and the Allies were like, we don't really like it, but we just finished a war and we're like, we're not fighting you. When did the Cold War resolve? 1989, September 13th. There's... I, was, I was born. Wait, was I born? After or before? It was real close to my birthday. <laughs> Old Uncle Chad. September 89. <laughs> I know that. Huh. There is space law. Where's October? There's space law. Space law. Okay. Nice. We'll save that for another day. 
<laughs> what, are you going to do an episode on space law? No. No, I didn't think so. <laughs> Nobody wants to see it. But I'm going to read law. about it. <laughs> okay. You tell me space murder wouldn't be fun? <laughs> space murder. What? Space murder. You murdered space? <laughs> You or murder you... somebody in space. What? Why would you want to commit murder? It sounds terrible. I don't want to. I then think why would it be, be good? interesting if oh, it happened? Interesting? <laughs> why? Because who would hold you accountable? Yeah. Like. Wherever you land? <laughs> kind of the same, like international waters. Well, I'm pretty sure. I don't think people just. Kill people in international waters and go. Hey, can't do shit. <laughs> yeah. They do. People get murdered on cruise ships all the time, and every country that like is involved is like, ooh, I don't really want to deal with that. Like, so many people get murdered on cruise ships. That sounds like an episode. And actually, that makes a ton of sense because they're like, why would our taxpayers pay for that? Who owns the boat? Like, so the well, that's what happened. It would, like the family or whatever would have to sue. The cruise line mm -hmm. to like do something about it. So one country will own the boat. They'll like load and unload, or like like the main where people dock like get on. Say that's in like Florida, so now it's the states. And then they're traveling to different countries in the Caribbean. And then a murder happens in the water. Who's gonna deal with that now? And nobody really wants to, because it's difficult. So what, they just get away with it? Yeah. Well, by the time an investigation like, comes to light from that, yeah, you could be like, oh, all the evidence is gone. I want to know, like, what if they didn't have to do an investigation? What if you murdered somebody right in front of everybody? Well, then I think it'd be a little more clear cut. Ooh. But somebody, you push your... I guess you wouldn't have to go to trial. Yeah. Like you push your wife overboard. No one sees it. sees it. Prove it. Who's going to investigate that? Huh. <laughs> so don't ever go on a cruise. <laughs> <laughs> if you and your spouse are a little rocky. Basically, if you murder someone on the high seas, you can be prosecuted by the country your, bo your boat is registered in, the country you're from, the country your victim is from, or any country that perceives your murdering to be piratical in nature. So that makes sense. It does now make sense. Your own country, obviously, because you like no one's doing it. Your country gonna like advocate for you, and they're gonna make sure that an investigation gets done. Yeah, that's true. Like you can't just have no. a freaking murderer hanging out. Yeah, he'd be like, you gotta make uh, sure you don't have a murderer. We can't have our citizens going places, getting murdered, and no one doing anything about it. Well, and also you just can't have like you show up back home and you're just like, you I can fucking and everyone away with murder. Oh no, everybody. How's it going, friends? <laughs> this got very off topic. <laughs> oh, you think that's the off topic? The beginning of the next Oh, episode. I got off topic stuff. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just a whole different... It'll be like a little three or four minute thing. I don't know where you're going to put it, but it's going to be great. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so I'm at work, right? And this guy's talking about... We're, we're talking about tigers. And... Just in rhinos and just endangered species. Uh -huh. and, he's, and he's like, um, he he worked for this guy. He used to build boats, like high end wood boats, and he had to go drive one somewhere to a lake and drop them off. And the guy had um, pretty much every trophy animal in his boathouse, which was like fifteen thousand square feet. No shit. Yeah, he had like rhino, tiger, and all shit. He had it all. No stuff. way. Yeah. Where? Fuck that guy. No, uh, who knows? <laughs> um, I know, right? Because then I was like, he's like, oh, that's, he's like, it's not really a sport then, is it? You know, he goes with like, um, goes to Africa with like bodyguards and like a whole team to like protect him. He's like, that's not a sport. He goes, a sport would be, you know, where the odds are equal. And I was like, so one, one V one, you have to go out when you're expecting to kill something, be killed. Right? He's like, yeah. yeah. And I was like, well, you know, not all sports are like that. You know, you can just like, you know, hunting is like, oh, I went out and 
I spent a month tracking an animal, but I didn't get it. And I was like, does that not count as a sport? He's like, no, you have to be able to die. <laughs> what? Yeah. So he came up with this great idea. <laughs> that. <laughs> we, we kind of brainstormed it. So he's like, oh, we should put a gun turret and strap it to the back of a tiger. So like poachers going out. Oh. Okay. You know, because it's a sport then. He's like, you have the interest that you may die hunting these animals. And then I took a step further and said, then you pay a subscription for service and people can go online and buy an hour of controlling the gun. And now you're monitoring endangered species. You have someone always watching out for them. And you make money because they run a gun. But I was like, the problem is, how do you load? Yeah, that's what I was saying. And I said, laser. And then he's like, what? You power enough laser to kill someone? How much solar energy would you have to build up? You get enough. Well, some guy goes on and he doesn't see any problems, but he just shoots off the laser and you're like, oh, great. There's your one shot for three days. Well, yeah. Yeah, you're right. It'd have to be a pretty big, what, battery? I know. You don't want this freaking tire looking at all this stuff. Yeah. Poor so, tire. technology's pretty good. We should make animatronic animals <laughs> and put them in areas, right, <laughs> that there's... Uh, Poachers. Hey, poachers. So you get like a fake tiger and someone comes up to it, but it's not a tiger. It's a robot <laughs> with a gun. Someone's paying a subscription service <laughs> <laughs> to take care of poachers. You know, how many people know you would have to, you would only get to operate one tiger at a time, right? Yeah. So you, you could like, oh, I'll buck this hour time slot. It would be so boring for the majority of the time. Like, you wouldn't be able to do anything. Nobody would pay for that. Exactly. Oh, yeah. You'd be like, oh, guys, come over. We're going to, like, rent the tiger. <laughs> like, let's hang out and we'll, like, walk around in, like, the jungle and watch, look out for, like... That sounds like more of, like, an, an old... No, you know what that would do? Versus an animal. You know what that would do? That would... Uh, be super dangerous, but, like... There would just be more poaching. Do you think so? Yeah, because you'd be bored because you wouldn't see a poacher and you'd be like, oh, I've only got 15 minutes left. Let's shoot some orangutans or some shit. Oh, so you think the people would turn? Yeah. They're like, I'm going to shoot other wild animals. Off. I don't think... Or poachers Why would, don't we just hunt the poachers? The poachers want to get something. Like, they Why want a trophy. Why don't we just so, like, shoot people gonna... who kill endangered animals? Whoa. Hot take. Like, are you going to do that? <laughs> uh, you could totally write software to... They're like, better at shooting than in the probably. name. In the name... Well, they have guides and shit. Yeah. I could get a guide. You could do less lethal. Do a less lethal and have like a software program that recognizes like threats. Also, all I can think of. It would be easy of... enough for like a software engineer to like build that program. Like self learning uh, software. And it'll only get better. Self learning software. So now you're not operating the tiger? No, you would. Because you're trying to make money and monitor. Right. Like poachers in the area. You just make it a TV. But show. now, you could do that too. That's, that's better, I think. Because then, and like, I don't think you want to be giving the general public access to like a, a weapon. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but now we're talking, now we're back to where we were talking sport. Yeah. In his eyes. <clears throat> so it wouldn't be a sport, but why does it have to be a sport? Where was he Ace Ventura? Because he wants it to be a sport. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh. You guys ever see Ace Ventura when Jim Carrey was inside of the Rhino? Yeah. That's all I'm thinking about right now. It's like we're in the Rhino. It's really hot. You have to like come out through its butthole. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's got little guns inside. This is so <laughs> 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 There you go. There you go. Do what? that. Do that. Do what? Now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs>